hello and uh, welcome to my channel again so this week i will be talking about uh, uh, laser physics and uh, so, uh, if you have any question related to laser physics or physics in general please don't hesitate to type in the in the chat and uh, i will try to help you as soon as i can uh, if you if you want you can also uh, message me your message and uh, i will reply you uh, within a day right so let's start uh, this uh, short lecture so uh, so in this lecture what i will be discussing is uh, i will give you a quick introduction of optics laser cavity design absorption emission stimulated emission uh, three level four level laser system and i will be also talking about solid state fiber laser waveguide laser semiconductor laser and uh, i will talk about what's the difference between each laser and when why we need these then uh, laser line weight what is ultra short pulses or oper different operation regime which are uh, cw q switching mode locking of a laser and then how to get ultra short pulse laser systems by using saturable absorber and how to how to uh, inspect the beam properties and the pulse properties and uh, applications of, of these laser uh, if you want to read more about it uh, you can consult these books uh, uh, these four books that i believe are very good in this field uh, but if you have if you manage to find any other book you are uh, free to consult those as well right so uh, what are the applications of the laser so la sorry lasers so lasers stand for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation and uh, when we talk about low power laser so they can be used for, op for optical fiber communication uh, optical data storage holography length measurement for example uh, by using interf interferometer inspection alignment printing scanning for all these things when you talk about high power laser then it means you want to uh, the, the power are extremely high in 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 in, uh, in uh, watts or sometime in kilowatts and uh, you want to use it for weapons atomic fusion spectroscopy photo uh, chemical deposition or gas sensing uh, surgery machine and uh, surface aging for example are the key areas where uh, people use them at the moment uh, so I picked this graph from Wikipedia. So we have uh, a lot of lasers nowadays. So uh, from ultraviolet to all the way to mid IR. Uh, so but they but uh, so they are so they are based on mixture of gain materials. Some are semiconductor, for example, indium gallium arsenide. Some are solid state laser, for example, uh, titanium sulfide. Sapphire. For and for and some are uh, based on fiber for example rbm uh, material is, is very famous working around uh, 1.5 over here yeah 1.5 micron uh, so yeah i mean and then they are uh, different uh, non-linear process uh, that i will try to talk about uh, not today but uh, at some point uh, in our saturday lecture series on if you have one laser how to go from one for how to go if you have titanium sapphire for example how to go to this spectral range or or below it uh, by using nonlinear optical techniques uh, so let's first uh, focus our intention on why we need lasers and uh, why can't uh, simple halogen lamps can uh, can't satisfy our needs so the first uh, thing is uh, they are monochromatic and uh, if you talk about uh, uh, different halogen lamps they are very broad they are very broad so why do we need very narrow lamps? so well uh, these are very important for example in uh, quantum technology right now where you need a very narrow line width and for example you want you are you you are studying a certain biological uh, phenomena that requires a particular way and you don't want to disturb any other wavelength so for example if you are if you are in, bi in biology there are different dyes uh, that absorb so if you are using a halogen lamp then those dyes 
uh, you can you can simultaneously excite different dyes but you don't want it so if you want to excite a certain dye then you need uh, wavelength selectivity so a laser can provide you this uh, this wavelength selectivity that is the the that is the wavelength is very very narrow in comparison to the to the halogen lamp uh, and uh, one 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 more one more advantage of uh, this is uh, is uh, when you use laser then very high power is concentrated in that particular wavelength whereas if you use a halogen lamp the power spectrum the power is distributed across whole wavelength so when even if you use a filter to 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 select that particular wavelength your power may not be enough uh, to provide the provide the 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 process that the, to provide enough power for the processes that you are interested in uh, sorry let me check if there is a question for me let me write it over here hello uh, if you have any question please let me know right so another thing uh, uh, that is very important about lasers is their temporal and uh, spatial coherence so what i mean by temporal and spatial coherence is uh, i'm trying to explain it by using uh, this picture so uh, temporal coherence is the property is the property of uh, of the light and uh, you want to see how its intensity is uh, varying with respect to time so for example i have over here this uh, this graph over here so if if you if you want to see how its intensity is varying with time then uh, what you will be considering is is, the, is is this graph in which if if at a particular spatial position if the intensity of your light is varying then you say that it's not temporal coherent but if it remains constant then uh, it will be it's, it's especially uh, it's temporary coherent so this is what i have uh, explained with the help of definition is, is over here temporal coherence is the measure of the average correlation between the value of the wave itself delayed by our by a tau at any time pair of time so if if you delay and if if we, if it match exactly at the same time then you you say that is temporal coherence. If not, then it is not temporal coherence. So, so what and what is spatial coherence? Spatial coherence is a is a is a coherence uh, of if you if 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 your if your beam is, is propagating, and you place a card or a screen at the end of your laser, and you see how its intensity is varying. So if if at that spatial position, if the if the intensity is varying, then you say that your laser is not spatial coherent. So these are the two properties that are very important. For example, in the field of communication and uh, for in the field of uh, an interferometer. So if if you don't have uh, these two properties, then if you don't have these two properties, then you can't use uh, light source for that particular application. Right. Another property is is a is a is a collimation. So if you try to collimate, uh, if you try to collimate a a light bulb, is really hard. It won't you won't be able to collimate it because there are a lot of wavelengths uh, that you have. So for example, if if you have a light source, external light source, uh, represented by two h, and you are trying to uh, collimate the beam by using a lens then this point will collimate the beam like that and this point will this point will collimate the beam like that so the overall behavior for, for collimating uh, this white this light source will be like like a divergent beam so the so if you have other optics afterwards then you won't be able to really collimate the beam so so the beam 
the light beam that you will get uh, due to the halogen lamp is not really useful anymore. Whereas if you use a laser, is very very highly collimated, and well, it is diverged after some reason. After sorry, after a certain distance, but if the beam diameter is long enough, big enough, then your beam can propagate uh, several meters very easily without uh, even diverging. Okay, so we already uh, discuss about this, uh, uh, about the laser, different laser available at different available at different wavelength region. Now let's uh, go deep into the lasers. So we, now we know that lasers are monochromatic, very high, very very high collimate, very and power is very high. If you if you discuss about if you talk about ordinary line, then it's poly polychromatic, uh, temporal coherence low, spatial is low, no, non collimated power is medium or low. Another thing is uh, another thing is uh, that I want to discuss is is the money. So lasers are still a bit at high end, uh, whereas the light bulb are not, but if for example for your application if if it doesn't matter if you have a temporal low temporal chorus then of course you go for ordinary light because if if you are considering if you are trying to develop uh, an application of course you will try to cut down the cost therefore in this case ordinary light will be will be sufficient okay so in order to understand what's going on inside the laser you need to you need to understand what's happening inside the laser gain material. So inside the laser gain material, there are three processes going on. Uh, number one is, is spontaneous emission. Number two is stimulated emission. And number three is stimulated absorption. In stimulated uh, spontaneous emission, and an electron de-excite from an excited state to the lower state, and you get photon out of the system. In the in the in the in the stimulated emission, you have an electron already sitting in the excited state, and due to this photon, it stimulates this to go from higher state to the lower state, and then you will get two photon, one which was the origin and then another photon that originated because of this de -excited. So therefore you get two photons over here. And these two photons are in phase. What, what is the meaning of in phase is a very important concept that I will be talking about more when I will be talking about uh, ultra short pulses. And then finally we have a stimulated emission. In the, in the stimulated emission the electron goes from the lower state to the highest state after absorbing one photon. So now, so so I was talking about uh, so I was talking about uh, two level. Uh, what I have discussed so far was using two level system. Uh, that is in the electrons are going from this ground state to the excited state and coming back. In order to explain what's going on uh, mathematically, uh, people consider uh, cross section, absorption cross section, and emission cross section, and uh, they, 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 when they consider the length of the medium. Because of course, when you are using a, a medium for lasing, it has a certain length. So therefore, uh, after considering this length, you can describe it by using this equation. In this lecture, I, I won't be going deep into these equations. Uh, you can consult uh, the books that I mentioned in the early earlier of this presentation. Similarly, uh, this uh, absorption and emission, they are normally uh, 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 described by Einstein coefficient, but the target of 
of this lecture is to give you a quick flavor about how the laser works. So uh, an important property for the laser to work is, uh, is uh, population inversion. So when you will have uh, N2 greater than N1, then you will achieve population inversion and therefore your laser will work. Otherwise the laser will not work. So now we have, uh, now we need to consider uh, three, three different system. That is two level system, three level system and four level system. Uh, in the, in the previous slide, what I talk about population inversion, that is N2 needs to be N2 over N1 needs to be greater than one. So if you, uh, if you talk about, if you talk about this population inversion in a two level system, then you won't be able to achieve, you will, you will never be able to achieve two level system, uh, sorry, population inversion in a two level system. Why? because the, the, the same photon that you are giving for absorption, you are in return getting the same, uh, the same uh, photon. So therefore, what's going in is, is coming out. So therefore, instead of lasing, your material is actually a transparent material. So therefore, there is no laser system that is based on a two level system therefore uh, now therefore uh, to get lasing uh, material scientists design three level system and four level system represented over here so let's consider three level system first in the three level system the u pump and the photon goes from level one to level three and and consider that i am taking from level three to level two as a fast decay so the photo, the electron will quickly decay uh, from three to two, which may or may not be uh, a photon de excitation. In some most of the cases, people try to maintain it as a, as a thermal de excitation, and then you will quickly get population inversion between level two and one, and when the electron goes from two to one you will get photons out from your laser cap, out from the material and you will get lasing transition that you can use for your application. Similarly for, similarly for four level system, you get excitation from zero to three and I'm considering this as the three to two as fast decay and then laser transition as from two to one. So you will get a photon due to this. And then from one to zero, I'm considering it as uh, a non-radiative decay. It may, or, again, I would say it may or may not be uh, a photonic decay. So therefore, uh, in the three and four layer system, we can use and we can get lasing out for uh, out from the laser cavity but uh, an important question is why we are talking why we are considering it a three level system and a four level system what is what is uh, an important about it so, uh, so well we call them a three level system because there are three levels involved in the laser transition similarly for a four level system four levels are involved Since the since the laser material is uh, made of uh, of is is made of uh, different materials, uh, it can be uh, uh, glass, it can be plastic, or it can be liquid, for example, or it can be a dye. So because of existence of material, you can get different types of broadening. So when we get different types of broad, with broadening, I mean, for example, if a laser is going to give you at a central wavelength of 500 nanometer, you won't be getting exactly 500 nanometer. You will be getting 500 nanometer plus minus few more nanometers due to this broadening. 
So there are three different types of broadening that I will be talking about over here. One is Doppler broadening, another is collision broadening, and the third is natural broadening. So in the Doppler broadening, uh, we know that atoms emit radiation uh, if they are not are not at rest at the time of emission, and depending upon their velocity, you will get Doppler broadening. In emission broadening, in sorry, in collision broadening. If since the atoms are also colliding in for, for example in gas therefore there will be a frequency shift and you will get collision broadening in natural broadening in solid state materials and when uh, a photon and when an energy is, is is provided due to photon decay then you will get exponential damping of the wave train Due to this, you will, you will get natural broadening. Now, yeah. now we need to talk about different gain materials. And uh, so when we call, talk about laser gain material, we call about host material and the dopant. Dopant can be uh, different material. So for example, here I'm talking about uh, titanium, chromium, for example, it can be neodymium, ytterbium, erbium, polonium, cerium, and you dope it inside a common host material. So, for example, for titanium, people have used sapphire and is a very successful material that you can use, uh, and it can give you wave, laser wavelength from 650 nanometer to 1100 and 10 nanometer, 1100 1, nanometer. So, there, so there, there, there is one question in mind that why we need these dopants? Why can't we just use a simple material? Well, the reason for this is you need to achieve your three level and four level system uh, out from it. So, therefore, you need some kind of, you need to make a balance to get this three and four level system. So people have used different host materials, for example, new, new, uh, new, new danium, mium, sorry. Uh, people have used different gain material that are shown over here. And when, you, when they have used these gain material, they have used emission wavelength at 1,030, 1,000 nanometer, 1,300 nanometer and 900. 46 nanometer for example so now let's talk about an example of a, of a gain material here i'm talking about an rbm laser rbm dope material so for example rbm can be doped by yak and by using ylf and it can give you a laser wavelength of around 2.9 and 1.6 micron over here so in this case, uh, when we are using with an earth system, uh, we can excite the material by using 980 nanometer, and it can go from from level zero to level E3 due to this, and and then from E3 to E2 is this de excitation, which is non radiative. And then from E2 to E1, you will get, and you when the electron go from E2 to E1, you will get a photon. And if this photon de excitation is happening in uh, in the presence of an electron, of an extra photon, then you will get two photon out of it due to, and this process is known as stimulated emission. So, why we need an stimulated emission inside the laser? Well, if you if you think about in this way is that an stimulated will give you gain in the medium, and this gain is what you need inside the laser for the laser to work. Because when you have an emission and you get one one photon. 
so this photon so right now i'm not talking about there is a one reason about uh, the phase as well right now i'm not talking about phase i'm just talking about the gain so let's say you have two photon and this photon will give rise to four photon and then when these four photons will give rise to eight so therefore there will be a multiplication in the laser cavity so this multiplication is very useful for your laser cavity to work so but they will be propagating in one direction only what you need is you need these photons to remain in your cavity for a longer period of time so in order to do this you create some kind of feedback mechanism so since a laser are so since the laser is light you create this feedback mechanism by using mirrors so you have two mirrors over here for example over here so the light what will happen to the light the light will will continue bouncing backward and forward and you will get gain in you will get gain in your in your laser another another important property is what you need is is uh, some kind of pumping in the in the laser gain material because you need to send your photons sorry send your electron from the lower state to the excited state so this can be done by using for example two means by using exciting with the help of a uh, light source or providing a voltage source so both can excite the electrons from the ground state to the excited state so before i go and talk about how to design a laser cavity i want to quickly talk about some basic physics because the first cavity that i will be talking about is solid state laser so we need to uh, know few basics before i go deep into that so the first is the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter 10 to the power 8 meter per second when the light reflects from a surface is called reflection and when it goes into a material medium it is known as refraction refractive index is defined by velocity of light in the in the vacuum divided by the uh, velocity of light in that particular wavelength and when we are considering a different medium the frequency remains constant but we need to consider the wavelength of that material mati which is which can be calculated by dividing wavelength in in uh, in uh, vacuum divided by refractive index another thing is uh, brewster angle so brewster angle is the ratio of refractive index in that medium divided by refractive index of incident medium so when you are taking two polarization that is p and s so polarization is if you don't know about what polarization is so polarization is the property of the light in which uh, the light is polarized in one certain direction because because this light was actually generated due to the dipoles uh so for s polarized light you have a brewster angle you have an angle sorry uh, for p polarized you have an angle at which when the light is undergoing refraction you get a zero reflection so what i am trying to say is over here is uh when you are considering a case of refraction there is always some reflection as well in addition to the refraction so but when you are considering a p polarized light if you are incidenting at an angle of around 55 when you are considering n1 to be 1 and n n2 to be 1.5 that is you are coming from air to glass then if you do if you incident at 55 degrees then you will get then you will get a pure 
refraction and no reflection so that's all for today uh, in the next lecture uh, i will be talking about uh, different kind of mirrors and lenses this knowledge is very important because we will use this knowledge uh, for uh, how to use so how to to design a solid state laser and uh, later in the week i will try to upload a simulation on how to design a solid state cavity thank you very much for your time if you have any question uh, please message me follow me on my channel and uh, share this video among your friends uh, so that i can have, i can have more more and more students thank you very much for your time